Film investigations in architecture questions everything. The use of collage in creating speculative architectural environments. My name is Terry Meyer Boak. I'm a professor at the School of Architecture at the University of Waterloo in Canada. My apologies for being unable to come to give this presentation, but I hope you enjoy the content regardless. Thank you. There is much to be explored through the detailed examination of film as a study of architectural design. This presentation and the associated paper reflect my work in a course that I have been offering at the School of Architecture at the University of Waterloo in Canada. Through a detailed examination of predominantly future-based films, we have been exploring an investigation into the impact of collage. The investigative techniques used ask that students learn how to view films in a highly analytical and critical way in order to understand cinematography and its purposeful manipulation of the moving image. The students must take this analysis and apply it to the creation of their own films. The films are created as architecture and music videos, taking the music as the basis of the narrative. No one has lived in the past or will live in the future. The present is the form of all life. Jean-Luc Godard from Alphaville, 1965. Although the present may well be the form of all life, explorations in architecture and film allow us to experience potential future realities. Although film can be purely seen as an art form, it is able to explore the development of speculative architectural and urban spaces, often in experiential and experimental ways that go beyond the capabilities, intentions, and physical limitations of commercially constructed buildings and spaces. Collage was established very early on in the history of film, both as a way to document urban spaces and as a way to speculate on the creation of fictional or future-looking urban spaces. In the words of Louis Castor, the art historian, although collage is considered an abstract form of art, the materials used are pictorial and textual representations of recognizable objects. But when placed next to each other, these representations may lose their autonomous meaning by creating a new collective. And this is how we use this in film. Because film is comprised of a series of linked frames, each which can be considered as a composition in its own right, the idea of collage can be considered within the single frame or limited sequence, in the design and construction of the set, or in the ways that the frames and the sequences are linked. Linkages will be referenced as transitions. Some of these essential methods of collage have been used in the student films for my course. Here, transitions are used to create blended environments and infer relationships or changes in substance or effect. These films show the use of slow superposition from an extended crossfade effect as the means to join the scenes, impacting the sense of the understanding of the two scenes. The blending of the scenes creates an in-frame collage that changes through the transition. These types of transitions are quite loaded in their inferences of memory. So these are often used to link architectural scenes through instances of change in time period. Simpler transitions that tend to be more abrupt are more often used as linkages. Two methods of collage that use exaggerated contrast to heighten the differences between linked scenes are juxtaposition and collision. Simple juxtaposition differs from collision in the tendency for an increased sense of conflict by the combination of two highly contrasting adjacent styles in the latter case. I will explain more about this later. To begin to speak of the use of collage in the creation of architectural film environments, you need to begin with Ziga Vertov's A Man with a Movie Camera. It was one of the earliest films to make active use of collage in the representation of urban and architectural environments in film. The special effects used in the film were groundbreaking for the time, and the way in which they enable collage is critical. Vertov combines a very large number of seemingly unrelated sequences and clips to create his impression of an industrialized Russian city. From the overview shot, to interesting and then unusual close views of aspects of the architecture, in this case the shadow of a window frame on the floor, to street scenes that use superposition to create an actual collage within the sequence. 
as well as extremely close views of details that tended to abstract the subject matter. One of the collage-based strategies used was a blended fade transition to link sequences. Walter Ruttmann, in his film Berlin, Symphony of a Great City, made use of similar collage-based methods. He made limited use of blended transitions in deference to the main method of quick cutting from scene to scene, using juxtaposition rather than blending or in-frame collage to create his impression of Berlin. In this instance, a clash of scale, action, and subject matter enhanced the almost chaotic pace of the film that was intended as a propaganda piece to showcase the frenetic pace of the new industrialized Berlin. Both Man with a Movie Camera and Berlin made widespread use of the collage methods of juxtaposition and collision. This was achieved first by quickly cutting straight from one clip to the next. Simple juxtaposition, two different scene clips side by side, would be heightened to a collision type collage when, one, the subject of the linked scenes was vastly different, two, the speed of the action was vastly different, and three, the scale of view, distant, macro, micro, was vastly different. What is achieved is quite purposeful discontinuity in the film to create a special effect. So, in the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, we have a discontinuity collision type collage in the way the sequences are joined by placing the highly expressionist chase scene setting next to the more normalized asylum scene. Color is also used to enhance this. In Berlin, Ruttmann would change scale and speed to create a collision. In Man with a Movie Camera, Vertov would jump scales, as well as subject matter and speed. In the film version of H.G. Wells' Things to Come, the intention was to create every town as an anonymous city. However, the city of London is clearly referenced in the use of the profile of St. Paul's Cathedral in the night view of the city. The set clearly uses identifiable architectural elements to create a familiarity of place in the collage-based assemblage of artifacts. The depiction of post-war every town was careful to include enough recognizable remnants of the earlier city for continuity. So the use of iconic architecture as the means to establish place becomes a distinct type of collage. Early films had limited technology at their disposal. Contemporary films now make use of a wide array of digital technologies in the creation of advanced looking, quite realistic future environments. This has in some ways changed the nature of the use of collage. More tends to be done in frame or in sequence than via the methods of juxtaposition and collision. The future environments portrayed in the fifth element combine the use of carefully handcrafted scale urban models with green screen and digital effects. This is essentially another method of creating a collage through the use of the various mediums. Here we can see the green screen set used to create the famous ledge scene in the fifth element. This use of collage, layering, and assemblage tends to make for a more credible depiction as it is grounded in a familiar present. It can be said to form the basis of separating future environments into science fiction versus pure fantasy. In this shot of the fifth element, the designers are building on a sense of architectural style and not on specific known buildings. It is important to the film that this is understood as a dystopic future vision of New York City, so elements such as the Brooklyn Bridge are carefully inserted into these establishing shots. Again, the use of green screen, constructed sets, and digitally fabricated backdrops acts as the contemporary method for creating an in-frame collage. This large matte painting highlights the severity of a dystopic future New York as we see the familiar icon of the Statue of Liberty perched strangely high over the receded level of the water. And so it was critical for the establishing shot for iRobot to include the profiles of the Hancock and Willis Towers as well as the existing gritty fabric of Chicago as the surround for the new central tower that establishes this in 2035. Here we have a collage of elements contained within this digitally fabricated sequence. To make a firm connection between the hypermodern interior spaces and the existing city fabric, this collage almost uses a green screen effect 
to lay the existing Chicago city fabric behind the glazed lobby of the skyscraper. The identifiability of the iconic Chicago towers is critical to the success of the collage in this sequence. There was continuity between the previous interior shot and this exterior shot. The interior of the apartment I robot is clearly set in the world of today. There is nothing futuristic about it. So we are using a juxtaposition type collage to create our impression of an eclectic Chicago style of 2035. Although there is a sense of collision in terms of architectural styles, this is downplayed as the intention in the editing of the film is to make this all appear quite normal and everyday for 2035. The use of iconic buildings in collage to establish the place of a film is used in many digitally based films. What is intriguing about the creation of the entire setting digitally versus shooting on location is the way that the buildings are moved around to suit the plot or setting. Where much of the city fabric of Chicago was recognizable and in its place in iRobot, in the day after tomorrow, the impression of New York rests on fewer icons, and there has not been an attempt to replicate the city in any exact way. The Empire State Building from the previous shot and the Statue of Liberty are really the only two icons necessary to locate the setting in New York. Hence, they are integrated into a far looser collage to create these city sequences. The extreme weather aspect of the film also removes any requirement for realistic representation. The city icon as a mobile collage element has become very common when marketing films and the means to establish place. Here we see the posters for the 2002 release of Spider-Man, as well as the poster for the day after tomorrow. The release of Spider-Man was delayed following the destruction of the World Trade Towers on September the 11th, 2001. Yet the importance of the city remained evident as a very discreet collage in the reflection in Spider-Man's eyes when the film was released. The notion of the importance of the identity of architectural icons clearly motivates contemporary future-based films. In the promotional posters for Oblivion, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Empire State Building clearly indicate the setting of the film. In the film itself, they play more minor roles, but the essential role they play in the collage of the future environment of the film has been established. If you did not know that the barren wasteland in the film was set in New York, its impact would be greatly diminished and a sense of familiarity and connection to the film would be lost through anonymity of setting. The collage-based future environments in the trailer for Oblivion continued with the use of iconic buildings as a method to establish the location in spite of the state of the world. Here we see the Washington Capitol building and the National Monument. And in this segment of the trailer, we see the torch of the Statue of Liberty in New York City buried and ruined. And here an aerial view of the US Pentagon building in the desolate landscape. This in-frame collage of an icon that is recognizable from the past, surrounded by the desolate future, establishes the severity of the situation. Although traditional collage-based film editing strategies are seldom used in current digitally-based films, their study remains useful in understanding the impact of collage on the construction of our film environments. In the words of Ram Kuhas, who started his career as a filmmaker and scriptwriter on the relationship between architecture and film, there is surprisingly little difference between one activity and the other. I think the art of the scriptwriter is to conceive sequences of episodes which build suspense and a chain of events. The largest part of my work is montage, spatial montage. Thank you very much for your attention. Please feel free to contact me via email or look me up on my website if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks very much.